Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to talk about Niagara and texture sampling in Unreal 4. To get things started, I've imported a texture. I'm going to use this one, but you can use whatever texture you want. So I'm going to right click in the content browser and I'm going to create a Niagara emitter from an empty template. And I'll give it a name, NE. And then I'm going to open it up. Now to get things set up for the texture sampler, we need to come to the emitter properties. What we want to do is we want to turn on sim target as GPU component sim. Otherwise we won't be able to use the texture sampler. And then because this is a GPU emitter, we have to turn on fixed bounds. And when I do that, I'm actually going to change my min and my max to negative 300. Just something a little bit bigger and I'm going to save and let it compile. Now for this example, we do want to spawn something, but we want to spawn something in a particular way. We want to spawn it in a grid. So if we come to emitter update and we type in grid, you'll see spawn particles in grid. And the thing is when we turn this on, we're actually going to get an error because it's looking for another module. And if we click on fix issue, sometimes this correction will not work. So what we need to do is we want to come down to particle spawn and we want to go down to location and we're looking for grid location. And you might still see that error. If you click around, it should go away. Now I'm going to save and let that compile again. And you should see a big box of glowiness up here. So these two modules work together, the grid location and the spawn particles in grid. The way that I look at it is the grid location is the actual dimensions and then the spawn particles in grid, this is our density. So if I set each one of these to three, you'll see that this gets smaller, the box gets smaller. But if we come to grid location, we can change the dimensions definition. And instead of padding per cell, we can change this to bounding box size. And now if we increase our dimensions here, so if we set this to 256 and 256 and 256, you'll see that all of these are now gridded out in a nice box. And if we come back to our spawn particles and grid, you'll see that as we change these, we're changing the density. So I'm going to set these, I'm going to set the X to 256 and the Y to 256. I'm going to set the Z count to zero. Now the other thing we have going on here is once again, it's just a big glowy mess. So we want to come down to initialize particle and we're going to change the sprite size mode change it to uniform and let's try and find this out. I'm going to set it to two to begin with. And this definitely looks a lot better. It looks like one flat plane here. If you get in here, you can see each one of the little dots. So we have our grid set up now. Now we can finally talk about the texture sampler. So if we click on our plus icon and we come down to texture, open that up, you'll see sample texture. If we click on that, we'll get a few options here. Now the first one is obviously our texture. So in there, I'm going to add the texture that I imported. And right away, you'll notice that nothing's showing up yet. That's because we have a few other things we have to set up. So the next thing we have in the sample texture are UVs. If you don't know what UVs are, in modeling packages, we usually unwrap a model and we lay it out flat so that we can texture it. And these are called UVs and they're usually in a zero to one range on an X axis and on a Y axis. Now the cool thing about the UVs here is that we can input anything that we want, but what do we input here? Now, if you come up to this eyedropper and click on this dropdown, you can show parameters for each module for what they're reading and for what they're writing. I'm gonna click on show parameter rights and you can see that this sample texture, it outputs sampled colors and sampler UVs. If we come to the grid location, you'll see that we have an output for grid UVW. So we can utilize those in our sample texture. Now, the way that we do that is we take the UVs and we want to break them so we can talk to each channel separately or make vector 2D. Now we have them separated out, but for us to input that UVW, we need to convert each one of these to a vector. So I'm going to click on the dropdown. I'm going to type in vector and we want to make float from vector. 
And we're going to do that for both the X and the Y. And what's nice is we get an option to mask out each one of these channels. So for the X, we have the X. And for the Y, we can change this to Y. And now in our vectors, in this dropdown, we can plug in our output from the grid location. So we're going to click on the dropdown. We're going to go to link inputs and then output. And you should see grid UVW. Now, if you don't see this, there's a good chance that you don't have your sample texture below your grid location. They need to be in the correct order for these outputs to show up. So I'm going to add my grid UVW. And then I'm going to also add it to the Y channel. And perfect, this should all work now, right? But not quite. There's still one more thing we need to do. We need to actually supply the sampled color into this grid. It needs to actually show up on the color. We're not actually changing it right now. You might be tempted to come into initialize particle and change the color mode here, but that won't work. We have to do it in an order of operation. So after our sample texture, we're gonna click on our plus icon and we wanna type in color. And in this color, we can now take the output of this sample texture module and we get the sampled color. Sample texture, sampled color. So we'll come to color, click on the drop down, link inputs, output, and you'll see sampled color. We'll click on that, we'll save so we can compile. And right away, you'll see that your texture shows up. If we wanted to, we can come back to the spawn particles and grid. Remember, this is kind of like our resolution. This is our density. So we can change this to something like 512. And you'll see that this starts to get crisper, get smoother. But we obviously have a lot more particles in here. And now, if you wanted to do something fancy to it, you can totally do that. So we'll add an acceleration force, and we'll fix that issue so we get solid forces and velocity. In my acceleration, I'm actually going to break this or make vector. And then in the Z, I'm going to change this to a random range float. And I'm going to set it from zero to two. Let that compile. We'll let that play. Ooh. Cool. So there is one caveat to this. So if we close out of this and we go and create our Niagara system and we name it correctly to NS and we drag it out into the world, pull it up a little bit here and we force all the, you can see that as this grows, you can see that we have particles spawning even though they're invisible. Now, I won't be covering how to fix that in this video, but I will be covering it in a future video. All right, guys, if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks, guys.